PNR Networks is a member of Patreon. Show your love for our shows by joining our ongoing fundraising campaign and get some fantastic perks in return. Check it out and become a Patreon sponsor. You can sign up at patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, backslash PNR Networks. And thanks for your support. Do you ever feel like you're normal and the rest of the world has lost its collective mind? Put your helmet on, we'll be reaching speeds of three. Do you find people saying this to you a lot? Are you totally deranged? Are you looking for a looking glass to pass through? I find your lack of faith disturbing. Or looking for a rabbit hole to fall down? Who could think of a better punishment, really? Everything's the same here, it's just a little worse. Guess what? Life's a bitch. Now so am I. You found it. (laughs) Welcome to Platinum Rose's Garden. Hello, my darlings. This is Platinum Rose Lady welcoming you to Platinum Rose's Garden on Sunday, May 28th, 2017. Uh, Um... I really want to talk about what happened earlier this week with you guys and um, obviously you know it's something that (laughs) you really like to think that sooner or later we will hit a point in time as human beings where we don't have to report on shit like this anymore you know you really do. Um, I mean, I try and be fun and light and stuff on my show here because it's a crazy world out there, and I want you guys to have some place where you can have fun and, and enjoy yourselves and stuff like that and have a laugh, you know. Um, but we can't do that at this point just right now. Um, the attack in Manchester, uh, England, was um, one of the most heartbreaking things I've heard in a long time um, the attack outside an Ariana Grande concert when the people were leaving an attack by a suicide bomber which has caused the deaths of numerous people and injuries to countless others and um, I mean what can you say in these kind of situations I mean you hope and pray for the souls of the people that are gone and you hope and pray for their families that they find some kind of help and peace from people around them and for the people that are injured you hope that you know they will recover from their injuries and you want everyone to be well I mean that's all you can really say that's all you really should say as a human being I mean but then you think about the fact that there are people out there who compound a painful situation by being complete fucking jerks. After the news of the attack happened, there were many tweets and comments and things put up by people who apparently have nothing better to do with their time than to make pithy remarks mocking other people's pain and using this tragic evil situation to push their own political agendas or socio-political beliefs or whatever and just want to ignore the fact that these people who have targeted, you know, the people who targeted this concert are targeting little girls. They're targeting little girls at a pop concert. And that's just so wrong, you know. It's just so incredibly wrong. And you have people out there cracking jokes and saying stuff about, you know, oh, well, this was all caused because of the way Ariana Grande dresses and all this other shit, to which I respond, fuck off. If during a time like this, you can't say something inspirational, something supportive, 
or just something flat out kind, shut the fuck up. You're not funny. You're not witty. You're not clever. You're an asshole. And anybody out there who wants to be like, well, it's my right to say these things because it's free speech. Yeah, you know what? It is your right to say these things. And it is your right for free speech. Which means that other people have the right to use their right of free speech and tell you that you are a fucking jerk. If you have nothing better to do than make remarks that are talking about, you know, jokes about something like this where innocent kids got killed, you're a friggin' asshole. And I don't want to be around you. I don't want to know you. And as far as I'm concerned, you should never go near a computer again because you're a fucking jerk. That's all I'm going to say. To the families who are hurting and the people that are suffering, I offer you nothing but love and support. And I, I don't know what else I can say other than I'm so sorry this happened to you. And I know that England as a country will pull together because you've had to in the past. And there's a lot of people out there that are here for you and love you and offer support and prayers and good vibes and good vibrations and good thoughts. And I hope you feel that and I hope you hear those. All right. Um... Sorry to start off on such a serious note, guys. I I really didn't want to do that, but that stuff just... Oh, that makes me angry. That gets me like Bruce Banner two steps away from turning into the Hulk angry, and nobody needs to see that. That's not an attractive look for me. I admit it. But let's get to what you guys came here for, the Supernatural Season 12 Recap. <laughs> Okay, here we are looking back at Season 12 of Supernatural, and this is uh, my look back at what we got this season. Starting off with Keep Calm and Carry On, the uh, beginning of Season 12, where we had Dean Winchester finding out about his gift that was given to him by Amara, who reunited with her brother, God, and they went off to look, you know, to explore the universe together as siblings that were caring for each other instead of trying to kill each other. Amara told Dean that she had a gift for him, and when Dean reappeared back away from the garden, wherever it was God and Amara were, he was greeted by his mother, Mary Winchester, who has been taken out of heaven and placed back on earth. At the same time this was going on, Sam, who had come back to the bunker, or the Batcave if you prefer, the Men of Letters base, um, was under the impression at that time that Dean was dead because everything had gone back to the way it should be and Amara wasn't wrecking the universe and Sam was under the impression that must have meant that Dean had destroyed Amara and in the process had killed himself. Um, Sam was met at the, um, the bunker at the Batcave with, uh, he was accompanied at the time by Cass and Cass was summarily banished by a woman who had broken into the Batcave, Lady Tony Bevel, who was a member of the British Men of Letters. Uh, Lady Tony says that she is there acting as the, uh, the liaison for the British Men of Letters, who are very displeased with all, with the Winchester's actions, and that she is there to take Sam with her. Sam is basically at this point of the opinion that whatever is going to happen to me, I don't even care because my brother's dead. And she winds up, Lady Tony winds up shooting Sam, which happened at the end of season 11, which instantly put her on my list of characters that I would like to smack upside the head with a nail studded two by four. We found out in Keep Calm and Carry On that she actually did not shoot at Sam. She actually shot Sam 
and Sam winds up being held captive and tortured for information by Lady Tony and other members of the British Men of Letters. This continued on in episode two, Mamma Mia, where during part of the torture that Sam has gone through, the physical, mental torture, including drugging, also including Sam being fucked with with a with a drug induced magic based spell slash drug that made him think that he and Tony were lovers. So now we're including psionic rape in Tony's list of reasons why I want to set her on fire. Uh, Sam winds up being rescued by his brother and by his mom. A lot of people complained about this episode in the fact that we didn't get a big bro hug and a big reunion kind of a scene. I think that kind of stuff we didn't need to see, really. Um, I think that, I don't think, it, I mean, I think it happened, but I think it happened in, a, in off stage, and we didn't see it. As the season continued on with the Foundry, um, episode three of the season, Mary had started hunting with Sam and Dean, which kind of was a sort of what the what sort of moment for a lot of us, because we were under the impression that Mary had really and truly given up hunting when she had died and, you know, back in the day when she had been John Winchester's wife and the mother to, you know, four-year-old Dean and little, and little six-month-old Sam, that, that hunting life had all been behind her. But it turns out that the Mary that's here on Earth now is want, wants to get back into hunting. Unfortunately, the Foundry, the episode The Foundry, had her being possessed by a murderous ghost, and Mary winds up leaving her sons again because she feels she can't be around them at this point. We went on to um, American Nightmare, the one you're waiting for and celebrating the life of Asa Fox. American Nightmare was a really great episode that dealt with um, Sam and Dean finding out about a family that lives off the grid and the deaths surrounding that family. And it also introduced a character that we had heard talk about but hadn't seen up till that point, except it very briefly, a member of the British Men of Letters called Mr. Ketch, uh, who turns out to be an extremely dangerous character in the fact that at the end of the, of the episode American Nightmare, Mr. Ketch tracks down and murders Magda Peterson, a young psychic that Sam and Dean had let live. Uh, Mr. Ketch kills her under orders from the British Men of Letters, as he refers to it, cleaning up the, the Winchester's mess. Uh, episode five of the season, the one you've been waiting for, is dealing with the Thule, the, the members of the Nazi party from World War II that were involved with the occult, which um, was actually a real thing, which is really kind of frightening. The episode deals with the Nazis that are involved with the Thule trying to resurrect Adolf Hitler, a thing that they actually wind up doing, and an action that winds up with Dean shooting Hitler and killing him. So Dean Winchester killed Adolf Hitler, and the look of absolute my big brother is awesome look on Sam's face in that episode was absolutely friggin' amazing. Um, season six, I'm sorry, season 12, episode six, celebrating the life of Asa Fox shows us a little bit of a backstory that none of us knew about at the time. And that was that Mary was still hunting even after she and John were married. She was hunting in the 1980s and wound up saving a young boy from a werewolf. The boy's name was Asa Fox and she saves him, and Asa became a hunter because of her. The whole point of this episode is Asa's death, and um, which turns out was by a, the murder of... A, Asa was murdered by a demon named J.L. The episode is the first time that uh, Mary, and, Mary Winchester and Jody Mills meet up, and we find out about some other new characters that would come back later on in the season, uh, Alicia and Max Baines, uh, two 
a, a pair of uh, fraternal twins that are witches and also hunters. And as they found out in the episode, Asa Fox's children. Um, this episode was really nice because at the end of it, Mary, Sam, and Dean have a nice reunion. And um, she does, Mary says that she's going to take a little more time become before she comes back to the bat cave for good which she says that she's going to definitely do which i i was like well at least that's a good thing obviously um season se- season 12 episode 7 rock never dies deals with lucifer who we really hadn't been dealing with up until that point um lucifer who is um the, who is the rock star, it has taken on the form of rock star Vince Vincente, taking over his body, which happened um, earlier on, and was sent to the bottom of the ocean by Rowena, winds up being resurrected by a bunch of dipshits that, um, you know, brought back the body of Lucifer. They didn't realize Lucifer was in the ve- in using Vince as a vessel. They tried to summon Lucifer and brought back Vince from the bottom of the ocean. Uh, Vince, or <laughs> Lucifer, as Vince, has, you know, kind of finally tweaked on to the fact that while he's riding around in the body of a rock star, he is going to be able to enjoy the perks of being a rock star. Um, and said perks obviously involve the whole rock star lifestyle. Um, I should mention that Vince was coerced into taking Lucifer in in the episode Mamma Mia. I'm sorry to say that earlier. Lucifer was on the loose from the previous season, driven out of Castiel's vessel by Amara. Um, so Lucifer realizes as Vince Vincenti, he has the whole rock star aura and he winds up falling into, you know, enjoying the rock star lifestyle and the fact that, you know, with with being a rock star comes the adoration of the public. Angry that, once again, angry with God that he's left again. Lucifer is back to smashing God's toys, specifically humanity, and plans to start killing people at a special Vince Vincenti concert. Something that Sam and Dean managed to put a stop to, but also during this whole fiasco, Lucifer abandons the body of Vince Vincente and has come to the conclusion that being adored by humans is actually something that he wants, and so he starts going further and further up the chain of powerful people possessing more and more powerful individuals, ultimately taking us to episode 8 of season 12, Lotus, where Lucifer winds up taking possession of the body of President Jefferson Rooney after telling him who knows what kind of lies. And the Winchesters have to solve this big problem, which ends with the end of the episode with Sam and Dean being arrested for attempting to assassinate the president, which obviously didn't happen because the president, the president actually winds up being saved. Uh, the, the spell that Rowena and Crowley use to drive Lucifer out of the president's body somehow didn't wind up killing the president along the way, but wound up, did wind up, uh, stripping his memory. During the episode, we find out a few other things, including getting an introduction, a more interesting and more like putting a face to the actions introduction to Mr. Ketch. And we also have Mick back as well. Mick from the men of letter, the British men of letters. Um, it turns out that President Rooney was having an affair with one of his staff members, a young woman named Kelly Klein. And it turns out that while Kelly is having this affair with the president, whom she thinks is the president, who is actually the devil, um, Kelly and 
Lucifer wind up making love, which kind of technically would be sexual assault, possibly rape, or at least sex under false pretenses, because she's not actually having sex with Jefferson Rooney, but I'm not really sure. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, the thing is, this sex winds up with Kelly becoming pregnant with Lucifer's child. In other words, a nephilim has come into being, which is usually not a good thing in the first place, um, but the idea of a human having sex with Lucifer and getting pregnant, yeah, that's really bad. Um, the end of the episode saw Kelly on the run and Sam and Dean being taken in an armored car to who knows where under, the, under arrest for attempting to assassinate the president. Episode 9, First Blood, dealt with Sam and Dean in this prison that, you know, one of these prisons that supposedly doesn't exist, which the men of, the British men of letters eventually get Sam and Dean out of, and turns out that they kill everybody in the prison who knew about Sam and Dean. So, they're in the clear. The Winchesters are in the clear for the rest of the season in regards to the fact that the government's not trying to hunt them down because the president doesn't remember what happened to him and everybody that was involved with Sam and Dean's arrest are dead. But there's still the matter of Kelly Klein, who's out there on the run. Um, First Blood, I thought, was a really terrific episode, although it did lead to some you know, things that I was sitting there going, this is a really bad idea. And it also led to one, one character that we really liked seeing a lot. And that was Billy the Reaper. Uh, Billy made a deal to get the Winchesters out of jail by faking their deaths. And Mary says that she will offer herself up to Billy as one, as a Winchester dying as part of the deal. Castiel winds up stabbing Billy to keep that from happening. And he he makes a really beautiful speech in this episode where he tells Sam, Dean, and Mary that he won't let any of them die because the world needs them and he needs them. Um, we see Mary also uh, meeting with the British men of letters, specifically Mick Davies, um, about working with them. And Mary actually seems to be buying their line since the British men of letters have been trying to recruit American hunters to work with them. Working with the British men of letters is another way of saying being a attack dog for the British men of letters. And the idea of Mary working for them, I was I remember sitting there watching this episode and seeing that scene at the end and going, This is not going to end well. And it turned out that it didn't. Uh, episode 10, Lily Sunder had, has some regrets, was, uh, oh man, this episode had some really crazy t twists and turns and introduced us to a character that I don't know about a lot of other people, but I would really like to see her again. Uh, Lily Sunder was a woman who fell in love with an angel all these years ago and was allegedly having relations with the angel that resulted in the um, birth of a Nephilim, the, the result of an angel and a human mating. The garrison of angels that Castiel was part of, and interesting enough, Castiel at the time was in the vessel of a woman, showed up at the home of Lily and the angel that she was with, an angel named Acabel. Um, this is back in, in 1901. Um, it turned out that the garrison was lied to by another angel uh, who was in love with Lily, actually. Um, an angel named Isham, who was obsessed with Lily, told the other angels lies that, this, that her daughter was a Nephilim and she wasn't. He killed her simply, he killed Lily's daughter May simply to hurt her. In the resounding years since, Lily has been, uh, Lily Sunder is still alive and is now killing the angels that are part, were part of that 
group, and Castiel is part of that group of angels she intends to kill. She has been kept alive all these years and still is young uh, by the use of Enochian magic. But the thing is, every time she uses the magic, she loses part of her soul. And the look of, oh, I, you don't know what you're doing to yourself on Sam's face when she says that is just really, really powerful and really, really sad. Um, I thought that, um, Alicia Witt, who played Lily, uh, was just amazing. I hope we see Lily again. I really do. I, I really want to see her again. I think she was a really interesting character. Uh, season, uh, 12, episode 11, regarding Dean, was a really great episode for a lot of different reasons. Um... The whole point of the episode being that Sam uh, Sam has to try and save his brother because Dean is hit with a, a really nasty spell by a witch. The spell is making him lose his memory at a pretty rapid pace. And there are parts of the episode that are actually kind of funny because you get this kind of more childlike innocent Dean in a lot of scenes which are really, really sweet. You can tell Rowena is very charmed by this this kind of like I said, this almost sweet kind of childishness to this other this other Dean and it's really, really kind of adorable in a couple of scenes, especially when she boops him on the nose, which was not intended to happen and it was just beyond cute. Um, but obviously this spell is this spell is an extremely potent and very nasty motherfucker of a spell as Rowena explains to Sam that eventually Dean will forget everything he'll forget how not like not just forget Sam which is a horrible thing to think about he's going to forget who he is he's going to forget how to eat he's going to eventually even forget how to breathe I mean that is messed up and the scene where um, Dean is looking at himself in the bathroom mirror and keeps repeating, you know, specific phrases where he's saying, like, you know, my name is Dean Winchester, Sam is my brother, Castiel is my friend, you know, and all this other stuff like that, and talking about Mary. And then it keeps kind of, you can see it all fading away in his eyes, and then he's just standing there saying he doesn't know, as in he doesn't know his own name anymore, and it just breaks your heart. I mean, Jensen Ackles just totally knocked it out of the park in this in this scene. And I loved the end of the episode. There is a song that, that plays over the end of the episode where we see what Dean was doing at one point when his memory was kind of fading, and he was just kind of like this fun-loving kind of guy. He's riding a mechanical bull in a bar, and the song that's playing is this song by Bobby Goldsboro called Broomstick Cowboy. And it was just, I loved this scene. I thought it was just absolutely amazing and so just fantastic. I loved it to pieces. Um, Stuck in the Middle with You, episode 12, introduced us to... Um, the the whole idea of the princes of hell, uh, the princes of hell being uh, the first, basically the first demons, the oldest of all of the old demons, and uh, the the one that we get introduced to in this episode is a nasty piece of work named Ramael, who um, is like I said an extraordinarily nasty piece of work. All of this time, while and this is another ep this episode is really interesting in the fact that it's it's done in chapters and it also kind of bounces back and forth in a nonlinear way, and um, it's really it's really really nice and I really like it a whole lot. The thing about this episode is we find out that um, Mary had stolen the cult. From uh, this this being who had been who had been holding on to it, and she doesn't 
offer up this information when Cass almost dies and when um, she almost gets a chance to tell Sam and Dean about what she stole and Dean doesn't give her the chance and they leave. Um, she... We we do see now that there are starting to be uh, cracks forming between Mary's um, relationship, for lack of a better term, with the British men of letters. That she felt like they she wasn't given enough information going into this whole mess, which almost got her, her boys, and uh, Cass killed. Um, we do know by now that um, Crowley, who has Lucifer in hell um, in his old vessel of Nick. He has Lucifer captured and Lucifer was supposed to be in the cage back, back in the cage. As it turns out, surprise, <laughs> Crowley lied. Hello, demon. Episode 13, Family Feud, brought back a figure that I was really happy to see back and I was really interested to see what they were going to do with him if we were ever going to see him again. And we did in this episode. Um, we saw the return in this episode of Gavin McLeod. Gavin is Crowley's son from Crowley's former human life as Fergus McLeod when he wasn't exactly, um, <laughs> he wasn't exactly in the running for dad of the year. Gavin was brought into, back from the past. He was a, in the previous version of the past. Gavin had died on a boat that sunk before it could make it to America. Um, way back a few seasons ago, Gavin was brought forward from the past and brought um, forward into the into our time as a bargaining uh, tool by, um, oh gosh, I lost her name, by Abaddon. Sorry about that for a second, lost the name for a sec. This episode deals with a ghost that has been killing people at a museum, and it turns out that the ghost was a woman that was involved with uh, Gavin at the time when he was a young man. And Gavin decides that in order to stop any more deaths or anything from happening and to, to put things right, that he goes back to the past. That he goes back to the time when he should have existed and dies where he belonged. Um... The thing is, this is also the episode where we find out that um, Mary, the whole thing with Mary has completely come to a complete and utter head. Uh, Mary's trying to explain why she's done the things that she's done dealing with the British men of letters and everything. And it's really not working very well at all. Um... Things in hell aren't going much better either. As um, at by this point, Kelly has been Kelly Klein, the young woman who's pregnant with Lucifer's kid, has wound up in the company of another prince of hell, Dagon, who is allegedly at first trying to. She's at first trying to get Kelly to, um, you know, on, on in a good way. She's trying to get to Kelly and appeal to her and say, like, the baby's going to be, you know, the baby could be a wonderful thing and all this stuff like that. And oh, I'm all, all of us are going, uh, we don't think so. Episode 14, The Raid, is probably one of the most intense episodes of the whole season. Um, the Winchesters have to wind up working with the British Men of Letters once a vampire hunt goes kind of south and vampires descend on the location where the British men of letters are um, holed up in America uh, while Dean and Mr. Ketch are working another part of the case. Sam and his mom uh, pretty much defend the place from 
the, from the vampires for the most part. And Sam actually winds up killing the alpha vamp with the colt. Awesome episode. One of the best of the season. Absolutely amazing. Uh, episode 15 of uh, season 12, Somewhere Between Heaven and Hell. Turns out that hellhounds also have their own way of doing things when they want to. And a young woman winds up being stalked by a hellhound who has gone kind of rogue. And the Winchesters have to work with Crowley to to wind up destroying it. Um, Sam actually tells Dean something that he... For, for a change in this season, we actually get a lot of Winchester truth-telling as opposed to Winchester keeping secrets and lying to each other kind of stuff. Um, in regards to Sam telling Dean that uh, he has... The, the cases they've been working lately are cases that he has found because they, Sam's been working with the British Men of Letters. And Dean, for a change, actually, I was like, Dean's going to punch him. I know Dean's going to punch him. Dean actually says that he'll support what Sam wants to do. He'll work with them for now. They've had to work with people they don't like and don't trust before. But if anything comes across as being weird or wrong or anything, they're going to bail on them. And Sam's fine with that. Um... In hell, Lucifer finds out that he's in a lot more trouble than he realized he was. Um, because Crowley has fixed up the vessel that he's in with all these spells and all of this uh, security that basically has the same powers as the cage. Lucifer is completely under the control of Crowley in this in this form Castiel winds up leaving earth and going back to heaven along with an angel named Kelvin who is has told him they're trying to find a way to deal with the whole Nephilim situation um Kelly by now is still very pregnant with um with the baby the baby from you know the baby with her whole thing with Lucifer and um still with Dagon at this point. Um, episode 16 of season 12, Ladies Drink Free, is dealing with, um, mostly dealing with Claire Novak, who is on a hunt looking for werewolves, along with the Winchesters and Mick. Unfortunately, at one point in the episode, uh, Claire winds up being turned and becomes a werewolf for a little while, but thankfully the Winchesters manage to cure her before Mick can actually kill her, as he does to a younger woman in earlier on in the episode. Um, I know a lot of people don't like uh, Claire. I actually don't have a problem with Claire, and I really thought that the end of the episode was really beautiful, where Claire uh, leaves a voicemail for... Um, for Jody and is actually, you know, really nice. And I thought it was really sweet. I like Claire. I think Claire's a good character. Uh, episode 17, the British invasion. Um, for one thing, the, the, if nothing else, this episode to me will be absolutely awesome because it brought back one character that I absolutely loved and we didn't see enough of. And that was Eileen Leahy. Um, the, the Irish hunter, uh, who is this amazing young woman, um, dealing with the fact that she is a, a, a really kick-ass hunter who unfortunately was rendered hearing impaired because of a banshee attack when she was a baby. Um, Eileen winds up working with the Winchesters and reluctantly with the British men of letters to try and, um, get the, you know, to get Kelly Klein away from the clutches of Dagon, who has slipped off her nice mask and has now, you know, made it very clear to Kelly that this baby is going to be born. And once the baby is born, Kelly will 
die. You know, giving birth to this baby will wind up killing Kelly. And also this episode introduced one of the um, most loathsome, hateful, absolutely cannot fucking stand you characters um, in this entire run of this season, Dr. Hess, who is a member of the British Men of Letters, um, who is the head of the school that um, is the the place where British Men of Letters are trained, Kendrick's Academy. We see more about Mick Davies' episode, at, at, at past in this episode, um, how this school is basically a fucking psychotic training ground where basically graduation involves shoot, you know, killing one of your friends to prove that you're ruthless enough to be able to kill people. I'm like, what the actual fuck? You know, it's like, what, excuse me, what? Um, an attempt to rescue Kelly goes terribly wrong and Eileen accidentally winds up killing a member of the British Men of Letters, a guy named Rennie Rawlings, who was a real douche nozzle, but, you know, the, the, the British Men of Letters don't look at it that way. When Dr. Hess orders Eileen be killed, um, and basically also orders that the Winchesters, who are not doing the British Men of Letters bidding anymore, be kind of brought to heel, Mick basically tells her to go screw, and for his pains winds up getting shot in the back of the head by Mr. Ketch. Ugh. Why do I always fall for the crazies? Um, episode 18, The Memory Remains, um, deals with the whole pagan god issue in a small town in Wisconsin where it turns out that a young man is sacrificing people to gain wealth to a uh, pagan god named Moloch. For the most part, it's dealing with that for, throughout the episode, but there is still the British men of letters to deal with who have basically declared war on the American hunters. They just don't know it yet. Uh, Ketch and some of his British men of letter minions break into the bat cave and plant a bug to, uh, keep, to keep an ear open on what the Winchesters are saying. Um, and we see, we see that at the end of the episode as Mr. Ketch is listening in on a discussion that Sam and Dean are having about the British men of letters and about Mr. Ketch in particular. Um, and Ketch is walk, listening to them as he's staring at a picture that he took from Dean's room, a picture of Dean with his mom, which just is this total fucking creepy stalker fucking vibe happening. Episode 19, The Future, is dealing with Sam and Dean trying to find a way to save Kelly and her unborn baby. Um, they come up with an idea involving the whole idea of maybe draining the baby's grace so that it will just be a Norman, a normal human baby and they won't have to, you know, kill the baby or kill Kelly because, you know, it, it's a baby and a pregnant woman. I mean, crying out loud. It gets to the point where there is a showdown between Dagon, Castiel, and the Winchesters in a, in a playground, which involves also winding up getting an angel named Joshua killed, who we'd seen way back in season five. It turns out that the rescue part of this whole episode does not come from Cass or the Winchesters, but Kelly's unborn baby, who winds up giving Castiel the power required to kill Dagon, during which also the cult, during this fight also the cult winds up getting destroyed. But, um, the thing is, something has obviously happened to Cass during this whole power exchange, for lack of a better term. Castiel is now of the opinion that the baby must be born with all of his full powers. And when Sam and Dean tried to protest this, um, Castiel touches both of them on the forehead and puts them to sleep. 
and he drives away with Kelly, leaving Sam and Dean unconscious in a playground. And we're all sitting there going, oh crap, what the fuck just happened? Episode 20, Twigs and Twine and Tasha Baines, another terrific episode that had such an unbearably sad ending. We saw the return in this episode of Alicia and Max Baines, and for a minute we saw their mother, uh, who is Tasha Baines, a, a powerful witch. Unfortunately, she's not powerful enough to um, deal with another witch in the episode who is doing all kinds of bad stuff. At the end of the episode, um, it's, oh, it's so sad. It really is sad. When Alicia winds up being killed and Max, who was the more powerful when it comes to magic of the, of the twins, winds up taking a deal, or making a deal for lack of a better term, to, um, take on this witch's power he brings his sister back, or a version of his sister, as this twigs and twine doll. And I don't know if we've seen the last of the Baines siblings. I kind of hope we haven't, simply because the whole idea of doing something bad because you love somebody enough, yeah, that's what turned Anakin Skywalker into Darth Vader, so I don't really think Max made the right choice here. This is also where shit really hits the fan when it came to Mary finding out what the British men of letters are up to. And by the end of the episode, Mary winds up a prisoner of the British men of letters and at the mercy of Lady Tony Bevel, who by now we absolutely hate. Um, episode 21, there's something about Mary... Uh, Sam and Dean are worried about their mom and at the end of the episode we find out they have a damn good reason to be worried because Mary has wound up being brainwashed and now follows the British Men of Letters bidding. Um, also in There's Something About Mary, Lucifer with the help of a, a demon named Drexel um, winds up starting to uh, turn the table, as it were, on Crowley and causes the um, reversal of the, the power between the two of them, the power that kept Lucifer trapped, now is in his hands and he winds up deciding that Crowley's, you know, got to go. The end of the episode is... Uh, <laughs> Not a real good thing, obviously. The end of the episode deals with the fact that Lady Tony winds up being betrayed by Mr. Ketch. She and Sam and Dean wind up being sealed inside the Batcave with the locks changed and the air being pumped out instead of being pumped in. Episode 22, Who We Are, um deals with the fact that, um, actually, let me just back up a little tiny bit. I'm sorry. I missed something and I feel really bad about missing it. Um, maybe I missed it because I didn't want to deal with it. I, there's something about Mary. There's a lot of things about there's something about Mary that are really good and that really move the storyline along for the season. One thing that does not and actually pissed a lot of people off, including me, um, was the death of Eileen Leahy. Um, Eileen winds up being killed in the beginning of There's Something About Mary uh, in a scene where she is uh, chased down and killed by a hellhound that is under the control of Mr. Ketch thanks to Crowley, because he has a deal with the British Men of Letters, because of course he does, because he's Crowley. Um, a lot of people were really, really, really pissed off about Eileen's death, um, to, because it was done at the beginning of the show. They felt it was done as almost a throwaway kind of a thing. Um, I'm not happy that Eileen died. I don't want anybody to get to the idea that I'm happy Eileen died. Eileen deserved much better. Um, and am I saying that because I completely shipped Sam Lean? Partially, yeah. 
I thought that Sam and Eileen had a really good chemistry. Obviously, Sam was attracted to her and she was attracted to him. And for once, he'd be involved with a woman who could take care of herself, which would have been great. Um, you know, a lot of people started screaming after this episode they wanted the writers fired, which is their right to feel that way. Um, I'm not entirely sure I'd go that far, but, you know, whatever. Um, the thing that I really find really sickening about Eileen's death, when you think about it, is the fact that Eileen, like the Winchesters, is a legacy. Eileen's grandfather was one of the British, well, was, was, not sorry, was one of the Brit, was one of the men of letters. And so that makes her a legacy, just like Sam and Dean were a legacy because of their grandfather. So the British men of letters seem to kill more of their own or fellow men of letters than they do monsters, it seems like. Um, Eileen, gone too soon. I'm sorry, gone way too soon. Three episodes is not enough. And Shoshana Stern, I, I'm really sorry. I wish you, I wish you, I wish you were back at some point, somehow, maybe. I don't know. Um, sorry, jumping ahead again, sorry, to episode 22, Who We Are. Um, Who We Are is basically a tour de force for, um, Jensen Ackles and Jerry Padalecki. I mean, a lot of episodes are tour de force for one of them. And that's great. You know, obviously, Jensen and Jared are both great actors and they both need time and moments to shine. This is one episode where there are moments where both of them absolutely just supernova is, is you know, they're, they're supernova, supernova bright in this episode. Uh, the, the whole thing where Sam gets a really great moment is the speech that he gives to a bunch of hunters that have gathered at, uh, Jody Mills' home after, uh, Mary, who has shown up brainwashed and tries to kill Jody, and Jody winds up getting the drop on her. Um, Sam talks with the hunters after, you know, he, he and, C he and Dean wind, <sighs> try that again. Uh, Sam and Dean and Lady Tony obviously get out of the bunk of the back cave thanks to the grenade launcher which Sam which Dean has been trying to use all season long you know um during the scene where Sam is rallying the other hunters to strike at the British men of letters base Sam gets a monologue that is worthy of anything from Shakespeare and Jared does this amazing job of, of delivering this. Um, while that whole part of the episode is happening, Dean, who has Lady Tony as a hostage bargaining chip way to break his mom's conditioning, goes back to the, to the bat cave and Lady Tony sets everything up also at the time saying if everything goes wrong, she wants a head start because she wants to see her son again. Fuck you. If they're trying to make you a sympathetic character, it ain't working, bitch. Dean winds up inside his mother's mind and in a break, you know, just break your heart in half scene, winds up getting his mother to see him before being yanked out of the conditioning the the break you know sorry being yanked out of Mary's mind by Mr. Ketch who has come back to the bat cave and killed Lady Tony by slitting her throat um nope still don't feel bad about that sorry and the the fight that Dean and Ketch wind up getting into is one of the nastiest fights I've ever seen and really kind of hot but Mary winds up breaking her conditioning and shooting Mr. Ketch in the head, which was just awesome. And Dr. Hess also meets her end in this episode being shot by Jody, which was great. Um, and now we are at, and the thing, the thing about this episode, is, which is so awesome, is who we are ends with the Winchesters together. The Winchesters being able to 
embrace both sons embracing their mom and it's just so awesome and it's so very cool the thing is while the end of who we are is heartwarming and special and fantastic episode 23 all along the watchtower by the end of this episode I was sitting there like I don't think I can take any more I really and honest to blog don't think I can take any more all along the watchtower deals with so much in an hour it's absolutely insane there are so many people that wind up getting killed in this episode um, unfortunately some of them off camera some of them on camera but we wind up losing so many people in this episode and we wind up losing other people in a way that's not dying but somehow even worse uh, Rowena winds up being killed Crowley winds up killing himself Castiel is murdered by Lucifer and Kelly winds up dying giving birth to her son Jack this episode also dealt with the fact that there are alternate Earths out there rips in space and time that the Winchesters find out about and one of these worlds leads to an Earth that is absolute carnage a world where Sam and Dean were never born where Mary and John were never married and where angels and demons fight on Earth and humanity what's left of humanity is stuck in the middle and the person that comes to Castiel's rescue while he's trapped in that other world is that other world's version of Bobby Singer the scene where Sam and Dean who are in that other world at one point see this version of Bobby and they realize after a little bit this Bobby doesn't know them because they don't exist here it absolutely breaks your heart in half the end of the episode sees Crowley doing one of the most unselfish things I've ever seen him do in taking his own life to make sure that Lucifer is sealed in this other dimension um, unfortunately it doesn't work exactly that way because Lucifer manages to get out long enough to stab Cass and before he but before he can hurt Sam and Dean Mary shows up winds up battering him with a with a pair of the Enochian the brass knuckles that have Enochian symbols carved into them and she knocks him backwards into the tear in space and time and she falls in with him and after they fall into this other earth the portal closes so let's think about this for a minute Mary Winchester who has spent all these years dead in heaven came back to earth and wound up knocked through into another dimension with Satan so this is the one thing that could apparently be worse than dying um at the end of the episode we see Dean standing over Castiel's body just looking like his soul has been ripped out Sam going into the house where Kelly was giving birth to her baby finding Kelly's dead body going into the nursery where there is the figure of an adult man over in the corner of this dark room who has these golden eyes who looks at Sam and gives this chilling smile Jack Kelly's son Lucifer's son is on earth and the episode and the season end I am giving the entire season of uh, Supernatural season 12 I'm giving it uh, four and a half bouquets out of five I thought this season was great there were a lot of twists a lot of turns a lot of stuff that was just absolutely amazing and fantastic I know a lot of other people didn't like it I'm sorry you didn't like it as much as I did 
I thought we got some great guest stars this season. Um, Jared and Jensen and Misha, needless to say, absolutely knocked it out of the ballpark. Mark Shepard, who um, will not be back as Crowley, he has said as much. Mark, I'm going to miss you. I am. I'm going to miss you a whole lot. Um, and wherever you go next, you're going to class the place up, i got to tell you. Um, Samantha Smith as Mary Winchester. Um, oh, boy. Um, I love what you did with the character, how you were able to make her more real. Um, Mary's always been a real character. It's not a question of that she wasn't a real character, but I know a lot, of, there was a lot of Mary hate this season from fans, which I'm like, okay, I don't, whatever. Um, I'm not saying Mary made some of the best decisions in the world, because she didn't, but she's a human being, and we fuck up. You know, if you're perfect, good, good on you. Um, I think the fact that for the most part, all the stuff we've known about Mary, for the most part, is what we know from Dean and Sam. And they're going to view Mary with idealized eyes. She's their mom. You know, that's the way that that goes, you know. Um, like I mentioned, we had some great guest stars this season. Um, I do have to say, I really liked Rick Springfield's turn as uh, Vince Vincente and then later on as Lucifer. Um, Rick... Gosh, man, um, I I really enjoyed your turn on the show. I'm I'm really glad you you became part of our weird little family for a while. Um, obviously, Rick's been acting for you know a very long time. I won't say how long because you know I don't want to give your age away as much as it would give my age away. So we're not going to do that. Um, Mark Pellegrino. Oh boy, I, I, you know, your, your Lucifer is really something special. That is the weirdest way I think, that is the strangest compliment I think I've ever paid somebody, but what the hell. Um, obviously, any, at any time we get Jody Mills in an episode, I am just thrilled beyond belief. Um, because Kim Rhodes rocks, she just completely rocks, and for Jody to be the one that killed, um, that that wound up shooting Doctor Hess, that was just amazing and great. And I was like, "Oh, that's just awesome! I love it." Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to see very much of the uh, people that uh, Jody lives with. Although we did get to see Claire in the episode "Ladies Drink Free," which was nice because, like I said, I like Claire. I think Claire's done a lot of growing up as a character. She still has a ways to go, but I like her. I don't care. It's just my opinion for what it's worth. Um, and I happen to really like Catherine Newton's take as the character. I think she's a badass kid that um, can also make mistakes, but she, I do think that she learns from her mistakes, which is great because a lot of people don't. Um, and it was so awesome to see uh, Catherine Ramdeen back as Alex in uh, Alex Jones back in um, in uh, Who We Are. Even though it was just for a second, it was really cool to see her. Catherine, you're great. Um, and I'm holding you to the promise you made on Twitter. I had made a remark about a Alex fanfic and you were saying that you'd read the shit out of it. I'm going to write something and I hope you read it. And I, actually, I hope anybody who wants to read my stuff um, will read it over at uh, Platinum Rose, uh, Platinum Rose Lady over on um, fanfiction.net. You can go look up my stuff over there if you want. Um, also, I want to bring up um, some great characters. Like I mentioned earlier on, I happen to think that the Baines uh, siblings were really, really fantastic. Um, Kendrick Sampson, who played Max Baines and... Um, the young lady who played Alicia Baines, Kara Royster, uh, they're both terrific, and I really hope we see them again, um, at some point or another, you know, seasons down the road or whatever. I'd love to see what the characters are going to be like as this, as the series goes on. Hopefully, like I said, we'll see them again. Um, now on to some of the bad guys that we got this season. Um, I really, really, really hated 
uh, Lady Tony Bevel. Um, which was the point, I realized that was the point of Lady Tony. Um, but I didn't realize how deep that hate was gonna get. Um, it got really bad. It, it, it got like, you know, hate with the burning of a thousand suns kind of hate. Um, once again, I would like to say that I am not reflecting that hate upon Elizabeth Blackmore, who played the character of Lady Tony Bevel. I'm sure, I'm sure Elizabeth's a great person, so there's that. But I was really happy when your character died. I'm not sorry. So there. Um, also, I loved Mick. I, I didn't think I was gonna like him. I was like, I, I, at first I was like, I'm really not gonna like this guy. I know I'm not gonna like this guy. But by the time Mick made his exit rather dramatically, I was like, damn, uh, you know, I was like, damn it, I like this guy, I like him, and they're gonna kill him, I know they're gonna, oh, there it is, um, hopefully we'll see Adam Fergus at some point, maybe, maybe Mick actually went to heaven, I don't know, I hope, I'd like to think he did. Mr. Ketch, um, played by David Hayden Jones, um, boy, uh, there's a song um, I use a lot of song cues. I love music. I can't help it. There's a song by Joan Jett called I Hate Myself for Loving You. I've never actually had a reason to use that song in my head. Every time I see you, that song plays. Why is that? Uh, David, you're so good at being bad. Um, and the whole fact that Mary and Ketch actually hooked up in a friends with benefits sort of thing did really kind of make me throw up in my mouth a little bit, but no offense to you, David. That's That certainly wasn't because we saw you without a shirt on, because that was, oh my, that was, uh, that was nice. Um, but your character was an asshole and a scumbag, and I'm not sorry he's dead. Uh, I would actually, I wouldn't be the slightest bit surprised if in a couple of years we see Mr. Ketch come back as a demon who would be really with a total hard-on to get his hands on Sam and Dean. I think that would be really friggin' cool if they did that. Um, also, I'd like to bring up real quick um, the young lady that played Kelly Klein. Uh, Courtney Ford really changed my opinion of the character because at first I was kind of like, oh, she's coming off as so spineless and she's really kind of, but I had really changed my mind about the character by the end of the season. You know, this is a woman who's in a situation that I can't even picture being in, but she's of the she's telling herself that her baby, even though she's not going to be here for her baby, her baby is still going to be good, even though everyone around her is telling her the baby's going to be evil incarnate. She still believes the baby's going to be good, and I think it has the potential for good. I suppose would be a better way to put it. Um, and I really like what she did with that, especially the scene where she's taping a recording for her baby to see, you know, after she dies. Um, also, uh, Ali Ahn, who played Dagon, is, oh gosh, um, I'd like to be like, gosh, I'm really sorry your character's dead, but I can't because you were really awful. I mean, not awful as in acting. Your acting was great. But, um, you know, you're really, your character was just evil and wicked and I'm not really sorry that she's gone. Um, so there's that. Okay. So, um, four and a half bouquets out of five for the season. Um, really, really something special, I thought. Now, that brings us to season 13. And season 13, we know a few things about already because Misha Collins actually said that, um, that there was, you know, cast was going to be involved in season 13. So there's that. Um, but there's other questions that I have about season 13. Um, one of them being the whole Princes of Hell thing. Now, as we know, the princes of hell were created by Lucifer after he created Lilith. 
and before the creation of the Knights of Hell. Um, the princes of hell were Azazel, who we know is dead, Ramael, who we know is dead, Dagon, who we know is dead. Um, it's really interesting because Azazel was killed by Dean, Ramael was killed by Sam, and Dagon, Dagon was killed by Cass, by Castiel. So Team Free Will has a tick in each, you know, in each thing there. Um, the thing is, that's not the only those aren't the only princes of hell. Um, there's another one out there somewhere. Um, Asmodeus is still out there somewhere. We don't know where. And I'm wondering if that's something that's going to get addressed in season 13. Because it's obviously something they could address. Um... Like I said, we know that Castiel is going to be back somehow. I don't know how. Um, and, of course, there's Jack. Um, the the Nephilim. What's going to happen with him? Is he going to be good or evil or both or neither? Um, it's going to be really interesting to see. And, obviously, there's the whole Mary's trapped in an alternate dimension with Lucifer thing happening. There are a lot of questions that that need to get answered in season thirteen. Um, hopefully, will get answered. Um, I'm just excited that there's going to be a season thirteen. I'm always excited that there's going to be another season of Supernatural. I hope everybody else is too, and I hope that um, I hope we get to see some characters again. I really do. I hope. As I mentioned, I hope the Bane siblings come back uh, somehow. Um, well, we know they're still out there. Well, we know Max is out there, and the doll that he made of Alicia is out there, but she doesn't know she's a doll, so that could get interesting. Um, I'd love to see Sully come back somehow, Sam's imaginary friend, Sully. I'd love to see him come back, because he was a great character. I, I thought he was fantastic. I'd love to see him again. Um, I would also like at some point to see Lily Sunder, as I mentioned previously, I think that she would be a terrific character to bring back. Um, who knows when we'll see Jody and Claire and Alex again, hopefully soon. Who knows what we're going to see in season 13. I know it's going to be a long wait till October though. And I hope that we can all make it together. <laughs> I knew I was going to do this. I really need to write stuff down. I really, really do. Uh, and I knew I was going to forget a few few more people before I said goodbye. Um, Ruth Connell. Um, boy, um, I am really, really, really going to be sad if it is really true that Rowena is dead um, and didn't manage to somehow get away from Lucifer before he stomped on her till the white part showed, as he said. Um... I I don't want Rowena to go. I think she's so awesome and just sassy and amazing. I think that um I'm really really bummed if if um she she's really gone for good cuz Ruth has been such a, an amazing part of our little twisted family over the last few seasons. I'll be sorry to see her go if that's the truth. Um I also want to bring up another another person real quick that I forgot to mention also, and that was Jillian or Gillian. I don't know how you say your name. I'm sorry. Uh, Barber, who was the woman who played uh, Dr. Hess. Um, you know, I didn't think there'd be any other characters I could hate more than um, than Lady Tony. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> you kind of fit that bill. Um, I, I really loathed her character. She was just this awful, evil, wicked person. Um, I think I actually hate her more than I hate Imelda Staunton's Dolores Umbridge. So that's saying a fuck ton. It really and truly is. And Jim Beaver, um, who came back as Bobby Singer, but not our Bobby Singer, another Bobby Singer. Ow. Um, <laughs> it was great to have you back, sir. Um, I don't know if we're ever going to see other Bobby again. I kind of have 
have a feeling we might. I don't know. Um, but I hope that we do. I'm really, really... I feel really blessed to watch this show and meet so many amazing characters and so many incredible actors. So I'm sorry that I missed you guys in my little rundown of other people before. I'm really sorry. I, I probably should write this shit down, not try and remember it all off the top of my head, because my head's kind of a scary place, and there's lots of cobwebs and mice up there. So <laughs> it is what it is. What can I tell you? <coughs> All right. Uh, wow. That was me rabbiting on and on and on and on and on. Sorry about that, guys. Got a little carried away because we all know we love to talk about Supernatural here on Platinum Roses Garden, so that's the way that it goes. Um, I want to talk for a second about something really amazing that happened this week as well. Uh, Jared and Genevieve were at the Texas legislature on the 26th of May, which promoted, if they were there promoting Senate Bill 179, which is called David's Law, which is looking at cracking down on cyberbullying in schools and the damage that it causes to kids. Um, they were joined by the family of a young man named David Molak, uh, who was 16 years old and who took his own life after years of being bullied. Um, bullying is an awful thing. It is an absolutely terrible thing. I was a victim of bullying uh, growing up, um, mostly psychological stuff, not really physical stuff, um, because I didn't have the attitude back then that I have now. Um, if you know somebody who's being bullied, if you see somebody being bullied, stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You don't have to be friends with the person if you don't want to. But don't let somebody else get hurt. If you know somebody's being bullied, help them. Report it. Do something. Don't just be a bystander and then wring your hands after the person hurts themselves and say, oh, I wish I'd done more. Do something now. And the fact that Jared and Genevieve are involved with this, um, Genevieve talked about how she was bullied as, as a teenager, which I just cannot believe because she's such a sweet person. Um... It just shows what good people they are. Um, I'm sure it's something that they both worry about for their own kids when their own kids are old enough to go to school. You know, you worry as a parent, I would guess, because I'm not one. But, you know, hopefully, one of these days, hopefully bullying will be something that we talk about in the past tense and not something in the present. Uh, I hope you guys will uh, check out the other shows that I am involved with, and those would include Subject Cinema, uh, which is the show that I am involved with with my sweet, dear, long-suffering husband, TC. We uh, talk about movies and do movie reviews and all kinds of fun things, and this summer is something extra, extra special. This summer, all summer long, Subject Cinema is going to the drive-in. We have our Subject Cinema Drive-In Summer where we talk about drive-ins all over the country, all over the world, and movies that play at the drive-in, drive-in memories, and all kinds of fun things like that. We hope you'll enjoy us and have a great drive-in summer with us over at Subject Cinema at SubjectCinema.com. There's also Front Row 5 and 10, which is our list show where we do all kinds of fun lists uh, which are involved with movies, music, TV, books, comics, anything like that. And there are other shows that are part of our little close-knit family. Those would include Cave Babble with Eric and Valerie, the Lion family, and their kids and grandkids and assorted other folks. Uh, right now they're on a little hiatus, but there's their back shows. You can listen to them if you'd like. And there's going to be a new show coming up with our buddies uh, Aunt B and Pee Wee over at Comic Grotto. Uh, they're great comic fans and terrific guys, and I hope you'll go check them out once their show is up. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I'm PlatinumRoseL at Twitter.com. If you want to send me any comments about Season 12 of Supernatural or your hopes for Season 13, send them to PlatinumRoseL at Yahoo.com. Uh, put PRG in the header and I'll know you want me to read it on the air and I will be very happy to do so. Uh, before I go, I would also like to say uh, this uh, coming Monday is Memorial Day in the United States. Um... 
from the bottom of my heart, I would like to say a deep and profound thank you to the members of our armed forces who have made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can remain free and also to their families who have had to take on the burden of losing their loved ones. Um, thank you for that sacrifice and remember the simple fact freedom is never free. It always comes at the cost of people who are brave enough to stand up and say I will give my life to defend others. So I hope you guys enjoyed season 12 of Supernatural. I will be back during the summer with a little surprise show here and there. We'll just have to keep a lookout for it. So this is Platinum Rose Lady signing off for season 12 of Supernatural, reminding you to love the ones you hug, hug the ones you love, take some time to stop, smell the roses, and always remember, kick it in the ass. Podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24 7.